What's up everybody, your boy Pat, back again with another edition of Second Take, where I talk tech and I speak sports. Today's topic of the day is the best 10 pitching seasons ever. This is a Heat Rocks production. Now, before we get into it, make sure you like and subscribe and hit the bell as it helps out the channel. Now, the top 10 pitching seasons in MLB history. Starting at number 10, Johan Santana, the 2004 season. Johan would lead his Minnesota Twins to a first place finish at 92 and 70. In this season, Johan would go 20 and 6, only being second to Schillen, who had 21 victories that year. He would post an ERA of 2.61, a whip of 0.92, he would have 265 Ks, and he would finish with one game completed and one game for a shutout. Johan Santana would also go on to record 10 and a half strikeouts that year as well. Moving on to number 9, we have Justin Verlander of the Detroit Tigers. In 2011, Justin Verlander would lead his Detroit Tigers to a first place finish at 95 and 67. Verlander would post a 24 and 5 record with a 2.40 ERA, a 0.92 whip with 250 Ks. He would complete four games and have two shutout victories as well. He would also post 9 Ks per game that year. And finally, Verlander would win the triple crown for pitching. Coming in at number eight, we have Randy Johnson from the 1995 season. Randy Johnson played for the Seattle Mariners this season and led them to a first place finish in their division. During the season, Randy Johnson would post a ridiculous 90% winning percentage going 18-2. He recorded a 2.48 ERA, a 1.05 whip, and a ridiculous 294 strikeouts. He would go on to complete three games as well as have three games in which he completed with a shutout. He would also post another ridiculous stat, a 12.3 Ks per nine innings. Moving on to number seven, we have Roger Clemens of the Boston Red Sox in 1986. Clemens would lead his Red Sox that year to 95 and 66 and a first place finish while getting Boston to the World Series in which they lost incredibly to the New York Mets that year. Clemens would go 24 and four that year with a 2.48 ERA a 0.97 whip with 238 strikeouts. He would have 10 complete games and one shutout. He would record a win against replacement of 8.8 .8 that year and not only capture the Cy Young Award, but also capture the MVP Award. Number six on the list is Randy Johnson of the 2001 Arizona Diamondbacks. Randy Johnson would lead this team to a 92 and 70 record that year, finishing first place in the division and ultimately winning the World Series against the New York Yankees. Randy would go 21 and six that year with a 2.49 ERA a 1.01 whip and a staggering 372 strikeouts. This man averaged 13.4 strikeouts per contest. He would also finish with three complete games and two shutouts, as well as a ridiculous war of 10.1. This strikeout total would be the third most ever in a season since 1901, only being bested by Nolan Ryan in 1973 with 383 and Sandy Koufax in 1965 with 382. Number five on the list is Clayton Kershaw in the 2014 season with the Los Angeles Dodgers. 
The Dodgers would be led by Kershaw going 94-68 and that season and finishing in first place. Kershaw would not only be Cy Young that year, but he would also win the National League MVP. He would go 21-3 that year with a 1.77 ERA, a 0.86 whip with 239 strikeouts. He would have a war or a win against replacement player of 8.2 while recording 6 complete games and 2 shutouts as well as striking out 10.8 batters per 9 innings. Number 4 on my list is Greg Maddox from the 1995 Atlanta Braves. Maddox would lead this team to a 90-54 and record that year finishing in first place and ultimately winning the only World Series of that illustrious Braves 1990s crew in the 1995 season. Maddox would finish that year with a record of 19-2 while posting a ridiculous 1.63 ERA, also a ridiculous 0.81 whip and 181 strikeouts. He would have a war of 9.7 while completing 10 games in which three of them would be shutouts. Maddox would also post an ERA plus of 260 which would be the third most since 1901. Only trailing Pedro Martinez in the 2000 season when he posted a 291 and also himself Greg Maddox in 1994 when he posted a 271. Coming in at number three is Pedro Martinez in the 1999 season in which he played for the Boston Red Sox and led them to a second place finish of 94 and 68, only second to the New York Yankees who would ultimately win the World Series that year. Maddox would go 23 and four that year with a 2.07 ERA, a 0.92 whip with 313 strikeouts a win against replacement of 9.8 while completing five games, one of them being a shutout, and posting a 13.2 strikeout rate per nine innings. Martinez would also win the pitching triple crown that year. Number two on the list is Dwight Gooden of the 1985 New York Mets. Doc would lead the Mets to a 98 and 64 record which would be second to the St. Louis Cardinals that year, who would eventually go on to the World Series only to lose to the Kansas City Royals in seven games. Doc would post a record of 24 and four with a ridiculously low ERA of 1.53, a whip of 0.97 with 268 Ks. He would have a win against replacement of 12.2 that year with 16 complete games, eight of them being of the shutout. Doc would also go on to post a pitching triple crown that season. And number one on my list is Pedro Martinez of the 2000 Boston Red Sox. Pedro would lead them to an 85 and 77 record finishing in second place. He would post an 18 and six record a 1.74 ERA, a 0.73 whip, 284 strikeouts while having a war of 11.7, finishing with seven complete games, four via the shutout. He will record 11.8 strikeouts per nine innings. His 1.74 ERA would almost be two runs different between him and second place Roger Clemens who had an ERA of 3.70. Keep in mind this was right in the height of the baseball steroid ever in which Mark McGuire and Sammy Sosa were going crazy with the 50, 60, and 70 home runs. He would also post the best whip ever in Major League history since 1901, the live ball era, 0.73. Pedro would also have the highest ERA plus in Major League history at 291. So there you have it, the top 10 pitching seasons ever in MLB history. If you disagree with the list, leave your thoughts down in the comments and let me know what you think. 
Shout out to everybody rocking me on Instagram, YouTube, the Anchor app. You can also find me on Spotify, as well as Apple and Google Podcasts. It's your boy, Pat. Peace. Catch you in the next one.